The topic for today is don't bargain, simply obey. So we're going into the book of Judges 11, 29. It's about Jepha and it reads, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jepha and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh and passed over Misri and Gilead. And from Misri of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jepha vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whosoever cometh forth out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace, from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for burnt offering. So Jepha passed over into the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he smote them from Ariel, even till thou come to Minith, even twenty cities, into the plain of the vineyards, and the very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. So let's give you a little backdrop who Jepha is. The Bible said that he was a mighty man of valor, but he had a terrible childhood. One, he was the son of a harlot. His mother was a prostitute. His father's name was Gilead. Gilead had a wife. You know, they had more than one wife, but he had a wife. He grew up with them. At some point, because his father was alive. So, of course, his father took him in. and But he was despised by his brothers. He had a lot of brothers and sisters, probably. But, you know, they always mentioned the male. And after his father passed away, they did not want anything to do with him. It was time to share the inheritance. So, his brothers were like, no, listen, you got to go. Because you're not one of us. And... They would tell him that your mom is a prostitute and you don't belong in our family. And so the inheritance now, they say, we're not giving you any of our father's inheritance because you're not one of us. So anyway, he said, okay, I'm tired of it. He fled. He left. And after he left, he went to live in a place called Tob, T-O-B. And that's where he resigned, which he said is close to Syria and still part of Israel, close to Syria along that near the East Jordan River. The Bible stated that he felt like an outcast. He didn't belong. The Bible stated right in the beginning that he was a mighty man. Before he was born, God already ordained him. His, the anointing of God was already upon him. Men do not anoint you. God does. If the power of God is already upon him. The hands of God is already upon him. No matter how mistreated, no matter what people do or what people say. Do you see where I'm going? Just like Joseph, his brother hated him. But don't look at the beginning or the middle of the journey. The victory is at the end. In the Bible, always look at the end results for people who are walking upright and faithful to God and obedient. The end results always comes out good. Disobedient. Not so much. So he formed a group of men who probably were like him, you know, cast out. And what they would do, they would help the poor people from being robbed or people would abuse the widows. They would be the one to protect them because he was a warrior at heart. When the Israelites were leaving Egypt to the promised land, they had to pass through certain areas. And each time they would get to an area, they would ask for permission from the leader, the head, the king, to pass through their country, pass through their land, to get to where they're going. Some king says yes, some says no. But the ones that says no, God always deal with them. So the Ammonites, they have said no, they don't want them to pass through the Ammonites, they took the land from the Moabites. So it rightfully, it does not belong to them. I'm just giving you a little history before we go back, to, all the way back, right? Years pass by years. And now they're still fighting about the land. They want the land back because God gave the Israelites the land to live in. Remember, he promised them the Ammonites, the Jebusites, all the land. He said, I promise to you, to Abraham, to your generation, to generation. 
And now that's why we still have people right now fighting. They're still fighting just today over the land. It's all an ongoing situation. So the brothers now heard that the Ammonites are coming to attack them. So they sent for the brother because the brother can fight. He was well known as a warrior. He has his army and God has that anointing on him. So his brothers, they knew that he was the warrior, that he well known all over the place. So they said, oh my God, no, the Ammonites are coming at us. What are we going to do? So they all gathered together and they said, you know, let's go get our brother and let him help us fight against the Ammonites. So they sent word for him to come and to help. You know, they're coming against us. Come on, please. You're our brother and we need you. And so he was like, oh yeah, really? Okay. So now you guys need me. Okay. All right. So here it is. I'm not going to let you do to me what you did to me before because you guys threw me out and I had to fend for myself and, and it was difficult. It was hard. Okay. So guess what I'm going to do now? If I come and fight with you guys, you will have to make me the chief over the army. I want to be the head, run things. I'm not just going to come help. And then you guys toss me away again. So they needed him. They was like, you know what? <laughs> he's our brother anyway. And, and I know that he's going to win. And so let's just do this. They agreed, signed the papers, documents. You're now the captain, lead us. So of course he met with the, one of the guys from Ammonite and they were saying, we want the land back. And he said, listen, this land doesn't even belong to you anyway. And our God, our father gave it to us. So you can't get this back. So that I'm a nice not thinking about our God and what he's saying. We want it back. Jephthah, he didn't need to bribe God. The Bible says that the anointing already is upon him. And that's what happened to a lot of people. That's why it's so important for you. What is in you? Know your purpose. What did God call you to do? So you can live it out. It's good to live out everything else in the world. But you need to know, why did God create me? What is my purpose in life? It's not just to go to school, get educated, come out. It's not just that alone. That's good. And I applaud everyone for doing that. But what about the spiritual aspect of it? So he messed up. He made a vow. His name already mean free. That's what his name means. But yet he went and made a vow to God. God already got your back. It's already done. We don't have to bribe God. And I know a lot of us has made that vow. God, if you give me a better job, I will serve you. I pay my tithes. I do anything you want me to do, God. God, if you give me a husband, God, if you give me children, God, if you give me a promotion, God, some of us, we may, I promise I'll do right by you. I promise. Now that's danger right there because once you gave God that vow, that's it. He's going to collect. You see, what we're trying to do is bargain with God. So Jephthah, he made a vow to the Lord in verse 30. He said, if thou shalt without fail, deliver the children of Ammon into my hands. Then it shall be that whosoever cometh forth out of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's. So the Bible says afterwards, he went up and he fought against the Ammonites and he won. And of course, the word starts spreading around. And they all heard that he won the victory. And we know from way back when Moses' days, when they won victory, that they always have songs from David. They have songs that they celebrate victory with, whether it's a poem or whether it's a song. And they'll go out and they'll dance. The woman got their stuff. They practice when he comes and... Of course, the daughter was of age. I think she probably was in the Bible and say, but I'm just assuming it was probably in her teenage, you know, and, and they were singing, but she was the first one to run out, the first person that he saw. Remember his vow. Remember what he said, the vow that he made unto God. Can you imagine how he felt? Now we're talking about his only child. He didn't have sons. He didn't have any more daughters. This was his only child. We got to be careful. Our yes. mouth, this tongue right here, sometimes we say things and we make decisions without consulting God. So now he's thinking, I, I made a vow and I, I must keep it. What's going to happen now? The word that he spoke caused death. 
spiritual death upon his own family. That's why we as spirits be careful what we speak out because it's called generational curses that we come back upon our children. So now he's thinking, I must keep the vow to God. She's not able to marry and have children or give me a grandchild. What have I done? Now his daughter will be denied a happy home of being a mother, of, of enjoying what a marriage is like. Because of his rash decision. Sometimes people do things in the heat of the moment that destroy their family, destroy marriages. He said, I made a vow to the Lord. And he told the daughter everything that happened. She says, thou has made the vow. Do to me according to what you have, don't have proceed out of your mouth. Only she said, let me weep that the family dies in us and that I shall never have a home. I never have a oh. child. And the father said, go. And the Bible said she knew no man. The Bible goes on to say in verse 38, and he says, he go and he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And verse 39, and it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to to lament the daughter of Jephthah to Gildide four days in a year. But if you go deeper into lament, into the Hebrew, it talks about attributing honor and, and praise and celebrating and rehearsed. So the daughters of Israel would go yearly to rehearse her doings, to praise her for her faith, the life she led. It was an anniversary to celebrate. And maybe it was a worldwide celebration, but it was in that district, in that town. Everyone that knows about Jephthah's daughter, what took place, they would do it yearly. Now, in life, how many of us have made decisions that have negatively impacted our children, our family? Jephthah did not make his vow in the name of Baal and those other dainty that they serve. He was a man that loves the Lord. But Jaffa, I know he shared his faith with his daughter. I know he had to tell her about God. The Bible said, train up your child in the way that they should go, that when they're older, they will not depart from it. Ephesians 6, 4 says, and he fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them in the nurture and abomination of the Lord. And apparently Japheth had instilled in his daughter what he knew about God and the God of Israel. She knew. She said unto him, my father, if thou has opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to what which proceed out of thy mouth. For so much as the Lord has taken vengeance for thee, for thine enemies. Even the children of Ammon. Her faith in God certainly reflects the favor upon Japheth. And when he said he was sacrificed, he said, okay, then I can't kill my daughter like burnt offering. Do you remember? God is so against this. Remember when God told Abraham to take his only son and lay him out? and sacrifice him and Abraham was willing he was obedient and he tied his son upon the altar he held the the sword in his hand and was about to kill him the angel of the Lord said Abraham stop no I know that you're a faithful man do not harm your son and he provided a sacrifice a ram that was in the bush so God will not accept Japheth's vow, knowing that he would kill his daughter to sacrifice her. That's not the God we serve. He didn't believe in that. And God can't lie. So what did he do? He knew that I will have to sacrifice my daughter. Now what you're going to do, you're going to the temple. You're going to live at the temple for the rest of your life. You will remain a virgin. No children can't be married, just like what they probably call a nun now. And you will dedicate your life to God for the rest of your life. 
That's the sacrifice. So he sacrificed his lineage. No descendants shall come from his seed. Okay, that's his only child. But he had to give. The promise he made, give it to God. When we made a vow to God and a promise to God, majority of us go back on our word. God, you promised me the job. No, I got it. Okay, God, forget about you. I already got the job. I'm good now. I do whatever I want to do. Your word is your bond. Before you could tell somebody that you're coming, you're doing, and they believe. Your word, it builds character. When you promise somebody, if a person keeps lying to you and keep telling you and promise you and coming and they're shady, you can't trust that person. Just don't say anything. Just let God do what he wants to do. Listen, God don't need our help. He is the God. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Elohim. He is your healer. He is your provider. He is your defender. When someone messing with you, you don't have to worry. Baby, just take it to the Lord in prayer. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fight about it. You don't have to keep malice. You don't have to be mad and be angry. Come on, God got you when somebody messing on your job and they're coming against you, throwing you under the bus. Don't worry about you. Someone is coming against your marriage. Don't worry about it. Talk to God about it. He got he said he will never leave you nor forsake you. What is God saying in this message? The topic said, don't bargain, simply obey. God can take those who have flaws and failures in their background. And turn them into a hero of faith. Who are we to judge someone because of their past when we ourselves are not perfect? Every one of us, yeah. we have flaws. We make mistakes. No one is perfect. All of us have made hasty decisions in our life. Hasty. Negative decisions that impact our children, our family at some point. Poor decisions. But the point I'm trying to make, some of us make decisions that reflect the lack of commitment in your relationship to God. The commitment we made to God when you decide to serve him. Lord, I I promise I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my mind. I give you my body. It all belongs to you, God. Come into my heart and be my personal savior. When you say those words, you've given him permission. You now belong to him. You're not your own. You can't do what you want to do or do whatever you want to just do. You know you belong to him. You were bought with a price. You promised to serve him, to love him, to put him first above all else. So when we made a vow to God, we promised him that he is our husband, our best friend, our God, that we will serve and we will not put Satan or anything else before him. Regardless of your past circumstances, the poor choices in your life, every poor choices that you've made, God can work redemptively and he is a forgiving God. He can make your life as it was before. I've seen God restore marriages. I've seen God restore children and and parents. I've seen God restore people, the homeless, and clean them up. And now they're they're big time pastors or they're CEO for companies. And and, and, and I've seen God open wombs of women that their, their womb was shut and no doctor can do it, but God opened their womb. I remember my sister-in-law when, 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 when she could not have a child, every time that she would get pregnant, she would lose the baby miscarriage and God revealed to me in the spiritual realm it was like a hole in her belly that every time she get pregnant it was it, 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 it disappears and I went to her church and I prayed and lay hands on her in the name of Jesus Christ you will have a child this time next year and she got pregnant next the same thing that God says not me I am not God I'm not taking any glory or credit he did it God did it and now she has a beautiful bouncing boy five years ago God can do all things. He is God Almighty. Yes, we messed up. Yes, we do things. Yes, we do. But remember, whatever you said to God, keep your promises. Keep your words. Don't turn back on him. Are you an unlikely candidate for God to use? 
We all are. In First Corinthians, it says, For he see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not mighty, not many noble are called. Verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Verse 28 says, and base things of the world and things which are despised have, have God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. 30. But of him are he in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written, he that glorifieth, let him glorify in the Lord. It's not about us. It's all about him. Look at Japheth. People don't even remember him. They call him the forgotten man. But I believe that God remembered him. He was tossed out of his family home. They rejected him. He was the black sheep of the family. But remember, God has a plan for your life. God always do. God does not make mistakes. The past is behind us. Let's reach towards the future. In spite of your shortcomings, God can use us for his glory. God's hands is upon you, my brothers and sisters. Don't be discouraged. Pray for your children. Cover them all the time. Pray that God protect them, that they walk upright in his way. Today, I encourage you, be like Japheth and his daughter, no matter what. So he did bargain, but in the end, he simply obeyed in spite of it all. God is faithful to his word. He's a faithful God. Did you no. die when you were going through? No, you're still here because God still have need for you. Do you know how many you, people in the hospital yeah. right now out of their mind don't even know what today is? Don't know who their families are. Don't know who their children are. Do you know? How many people were in an accident even today? Do you know how many people lost their family last night? Do you know how many people right now are under the bridges? Our job is to pray for one another, love one another, build each other up, spread his love. And God is saying today, I know we made mistakes in the past, but move forward. Simply obey. Let's do the clean slate. God, I've done wrong. I've messed up. Yes. Some things I don't even want people to know that I did. We have people in our families that we need to speak. Speak the word. It's not about money and all the time and food. Sometimes we need to give them that word of encouragement. Build them up. Salvation is free. Words of encouragement is free. Speak these words into your children's life. Speak them to your family. Speak them unto your friends, even your enemies. Thank and I'm going to cross this. Don't bargain. You don't have to bargain anymore to God. God, if you do this for me, remember, it's already done. We're living the life in fast forward. Jesus Christ already died on the cross over 2,000 years ago. He shed his blood. He said, I already give you peace. I gave you peace. I gave you life. I gave you abundance. I gave you prosperity. I gave you health. I gave you healing. I gave you all these things that you need spiritually and material. I already gave you the Holy Spirit in you. I already gave it to you. All you have to do, you have the power in you. Access them. Speak. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop whining. Stop complaining. I want you to push your shoulders back and I want you to stand firm on those feet that God gave you and I want you to proclaim it decree and declare that you are the head you're not the tail I want you to declare and decree that you are healed oh, decree God. and declare that your family are saved delivered and set Jesus, free. the Holy God. Spirit I command it in Jesus name my household is blessed I am blessed and highly favored I speak life over me I speak Speak prosperity over my family. Promise me today that whenever you get up, 
The enemy comes in dreams and visions and, and sometimes you get up and you feel restless and so angry and, and, and you just don't feel right. Something just something just feel off and the enemy messing with you all night long. You've been wrestling, but when you woke up, you feel that, but you get up and you say, in spite of how I feel, I will have a good day. I'm going to have a prosperous day. Today's good news. And you speak it. God is good all the time. He is a redeemer. If you knew who you are in Christ, you see, they thought he was a illegitimate child. If you only knew the power that you possessed, if you only knew half of what God says you are, rise up, my sisters and my brothers. It's time for payback for mm. what the enemy has Hallelujah. stolen from yes, you. God. It's time for payback. Amen. Hallelujah. The enemy has stolen right from you. Receive it. You try to steal your joy for years, yes. your peace, Thank mess you with Lord. your children, mess with your husband, your family, mm -hmm. your finances, your job, whatever he's trying to steal from you. He stole from you in the years. God said it's time for payback. You Amen. here for a reason. You have family members that died early, way before they died before you're still alive. Why? Why? Come on, people, let's get it together. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice in it. Amen. I am who God says I am. I am above and not beneath. Hallelujah. I am healthy. I am not sick. I am the lender. I am not the borrower. Do you believe that? What oh, a mighty God we serve. Yeah.